Hi, I'm Dr. Twasim and welcome to my Derm classes. So today's lecture is on history taking in dermatology. So let's get started. Uh, so the first step to taking a proper history is building a rapport with the patient. So uh, whenever a patient comes to your clinic uh, or when you take uh, the history for uh, examination purpose, it's always important that you introduce yourself as a student or as a consultant and uh, also take uh, the patient details and thereby building a rapport. It's very important because the more the rapport you have with your patient, the more uh, uh, open the patient is going to be while giving the history and uh, the more accurate your diagnosis will be. So the question now is how to take a history. So history taking is just like an art. So it can be tailor made according to the patient and even the, uh, the doctor and according to the clinical scenario. Uh, but there are certain factors that you need to emphasize while taking a history. So uh, the main things, uh, so I'm here just to guide you on what are the cornerstones that you need to touch up on so that you come to a clear history uh, and a conclusion. So the main points are prisoning complaint, history of prisoning complaint, past medical history, personal history and family history. So now we'll move on to each in detail. So the prisoning complaint will be basically the uh, main complaint with which the patient has uh, come to see you, to consult you. So it will be the most reasoned one uh, in most cases, in 80% of the cases. So, uh, and the next step is the history of prisoning complaint. So uh, when it comes to history of prisoning complaint, it's nothing but asking more details about the chief complaint of the patient. So uh, most likely in a dermatology outpatient, the patient will have a, a skin condition that she has come with, a clinical lesion mostly. It might not be true in all cases. So in that case, you need to know what is the morphology of the lesion. So whenever the patient uh, comes to you, it's always, always good uh, to ask both open and closed ended questions. So you can always let the patient explain what the problems with which the patient has come and then you can further move down to the closed ended questions so that you will get a very clear idea on the clinical problem the patient has presented with. So one that uh, uh, one thing that you need to emphasize on is a morphology. So always ask the patient on the type of the lesion that she is having. So with, for example, whether it is a papule or a plaque. So it, or it's a patch or a macule. So in patient's words, you can ask whether the lesion is elevated or non-elevated. And then you can uh, go on to the color. So you can ask the patient if it is uh, uh, erythematous, which is in patient's words, it can be red, it can be brown, it can be black. So you can ask about the color. It can be white, as in the case of vitiligo. And then you can go on to other features in the morphology of the lesion that is that is uh, what in dermatology we call as a secondary lesions which is like scaling crusting and erosion so you can ask the patient whether she has or he has noticed any scaling erosion or cr erosions or crusting in the lesion so thereby you're getting a picture of the clinical lesion which with the patient has presented to you or the main complaint which further you'll move uh, down in the examination to emphasize the history that you have got and then what next you can ask is about the associated symptoms, for example, pain or itching. As you know, the eczematous conditions will be associated more with itching, uh, whereas it will be more pain when it's like a squamous cell carcinoma or when it's an erosion, it can be sore. So it's always good to ask about one lesion, uh, about the morphology and the associated symptoms. And the next thing that you can ask is the distribution. So ask the patient where all have she noticed those lesions. Sometimes she might have presented with a lesion on the arm because it's cosmetically concerning. But uh, you should probe and ask if those lesions are present anywhere else. And distribution is very important. You know, many clinical diagnoses, as you all know, in dermatology is based on the distribution. For example, psoriasis will be distributed mostly in the extensors. Um, and atopic dermatitis is mostly seen in the flexures. So distribution is very important. Now coming to the evolution, uh, again, evolution is very important. For example, if you're considering the cutaneous malignancies, uh, um, conditions like squamosal carcinoma, melanoma, keratoacanthoma, all those have got a rapid progression. So whereas BCC has a got a very slow progression. So it's always important to ask the evolution. And also um, you can ask, for example, in case of bullous diseases, it can start as a small papule, which progress to become a small vesicle, which further enlarge to become a bulla. So it's always good to ask the evolution so that you get a clinical picture of how the patient has evolved um, having the clinical uh, lesion. 
So once you have finished about the uh, main clinical lesions, you can ask about the other involvement. For example, whether the patient has any noticed any changes in the nail. For example, as you know, in the psoriasis, there can be nail pitting, there can be onycholysis, onychomedicines. Though the patient won't be able to give a clear picture of uh, what she is uh, having in the nails, she might have noticed some nail changes. For example, it is uh, uh, subungual hyperkeratosis can present like difficulty in cutting the nails. So all those things you can ask. The next thing that you can ask is about any hair involvement. For example, in systemic lupus erythematosus, the patient might have had a hair loss. So it can be a patchy hair loss or a diffuse hair loss. So that can be asked. Another thing that you can ask is about the mucosal lesions. So that again comes to the, uh, uh, again helps in diagnosing the clinical condition. For example, diseases like pemphigus vulgaris uh, mostly has got an over oral involvement despite the cutaneous involvement. So you can ask if the patient has noticed any erosions in the oral cavity as well as their private parts. So that mainly stands for the vaginal mucosal involvement or in the genitalia involvement. So you can ask more details on that. So next is the systemic features. Uh, so there can be a lot of systemic features for the clinical conditions that you have in your outpatient department. For example, psoriasis, when it's presenting uh, uh, in an exacerbated state, there can be features of fatigue, arthritis, arthralgia. In certain conditions like lymphoma, um, there can be features of night sweats, there can be features of weight loss. A similar history can be found in tuberculosis. So it's very necessary that you ask about the systemic features if at all they are present and the next uh, question should be to rule out the other diagnosis for example uh, for example once you're considering the psoriasis another scaly lesion that you might consider in your mind is subacute cutaneous uh, lupus erythematosus so in order to rule out SCLE you can ask questions on whether sh uh, she or he has oral ulcers whether there is photosensitivity whether there is arthritis and arthritis which might be present in psoriasis also but these relevant negative histories will help you to rule out the other possible differential diagnosis okay coming to the precipitating factors so the precipitating factors uh, can vary according to the clinical condition but uh, let's take the case of an acne uh, acne can be precipitated by um, any use of uh, new cosmetic products that the patient have tried or in general all the diseases can be exacerbated once there is a withdrawal of the treatment they uh, were on so that can be a common precipitating factor that you can ask uh, and uh, for example, in case of psoriasis, it can be some stress, uh, it can be certain infections uh, which precipitates gutate psoriasis. So all these things should also be asked in the history to, to know the precipitating factors. The next is coming to the complications. So it depends on the uh, clinical condition. It may not be there for um, all the conditions that you can ask, but uh, if at all it's there, you should ask. Uh, for example, uh, you can ask about um, coronary artery disease in a long-standing psoriasis case because it's an expected complication. Uh, so it, it may not be common, but obviously it is worth to ask in the history. Another important aspect is about the quality of life. So uh, you should uh, should not miss out the question on quality of life. You should ask about how much the disease has affected his or her personal life as well as a work life. So uh, that is very necessary uh, for you to also uh, decide upon the treatment um, for the. So coming to the past medical history. Uh, this is the first one is a history of similar episodes. For example, in case of psoriasis, there might be a, a history of recurrent episodes uh, in the past. So that should be asked. And the next is about any other skin problems. So there can be clinical conditions that coexist. For example, in a diabetic patient, there can be acanthosis nigricans and intertrigo, uh, a recurrent candidal infection. So obviously you can ask about that. There can be coexistence of dry skin and vitiligo. Why there can be association of hypothyroidism and vitiligo? So that that can lead to dry skin so this all can be asked in the um, past medical history you can also ask about history of previous treatments and the response to treatments so that can again help um, us to uh, determine the treatment that we need to give to the patients so this can even be asked in the history of presenting complaint or the patient might tell you about this in the history of presenting complaint and that's fine because it can be changed uh, as I've already mentioned it's just an art and it depends on the clinical scenario and the patient that you're dealing with uh, it's just that you you should not forget to ask these uh, questions 
and the other one is the history of any regular medications and comorbidities for example we know a lot of conditions are precipitated um, uh, due to the medications that take for example psoriasis can be precipitated by beta blockers uh, that can be bullous pemphigoid can be uh, precipitated by the oral hypoglycemic uh, drugs such as gliptins so it's very important that you ask about the medications and even uh, there can be a drug reaction uh, that is presented to you so you need to ask on the regular medications you can also ask about history of any previous surgeries uh, so uh, uh, this can again like for example um, can be associated with some cutaneous metastasis the patient has undergone uh, some surgeries for malignancies and now the patient might have presented to you with a cutaneous metastasis so it's always necessary that you should also ask about history of any surgeries in the past and uh, another very important uh, part is coming to the allergies so you should uh, never miss out on asking about the drug allergy it's as you know it's important in history taking in every field uh, so it again determines um, uh, the treatment that you give to the patient so drug allergy is another important point so coming to the personal history you can ask about the sleep again uh, this can impact uh, uh, the quality this can be um, a dimension of quality of life and even for example the diseases like psoriasis get exacerbated by stress so the patient can have a lack of sleep another thing that you need to ask is about the bowel and bladder habits in personal history uh, so for example if it is a cutaneous uh, lesion of a crohn's disease ulcerative colitis there can be uh, altered bowel and bladder habits so you can ask about that for example in dermatitis herpetiformis um, where the patient will present to you with itchy skin lesions there can also be a uh, uh, a history of uh, intolerance to any food so it's very important to ask about bowel and bladder habits coming to smoking and alcohol again these are the exacerbating factors for for example in scenarios like psoriasis so it's very important that you ask about that even while considering the treatment for example uh, alcohol as we all know it causes uh, hepatic fibrosis so if you're considering to start with the drugs in a patient and if the patient is taking a lot of alcohol obviously you need to do investigations uh, in order to make sure that the liver is not fibrosed and you are not further fibrosing the liver with the methotrexate or the treatment that you are giving and coming to the menstrual history again it's important when coming to conditions like that polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, where the patient might have presented to you with acne hirsutism or hair fall so it's very important that you ask about the menstrual history coming to the family history it's very important that you ask any history of similar illnesses in the family for example the psoriasis can occur in families atopic dermatitis can occur in fa uh, families certain malignancies can run in families so it's very important to get a uh, history of similar illness in the family so now we have completed almost our history the next part is about the patient perspectives so it's very important to know what the patient's ideas and concerns are so it's it comes in the mnemonic of ice where you need to ask about the ideas concerns expectations effects it's very important uh, as we all know uh, that your treatment or your uh, investigations should be um also discussed with the patients so in order to make a shared uh, decision you also need to know about the patient's perspectives so it uh, we need to ask about uh, the ideas of the patient regarding the disease their concerns about the disease and what do they expect out of the treatment that we give or the effects of the treatment that we give so this part is also very very important when you take a history so once you are done with the history always make sure that you summarize the points that you have got uh, from uh, history taking uh, back to the patient and let them know if there is uh, something uh, wrong that you have taken down or ask them to correct if you are wrong about the information that you have al already got from the patient and uh, always at the end ask if there is something else that he or she want to tell you which you haven't asked so this will uh, again complete the history uh, which will help again further to make a diagnosis it'll improve the rapport with the patient also so always close the session by um, a giving of faith to the patient uh, for example always assure the patient that we'll always uh, we'll we have we'll be considering your issue uh, we'll be taking further necessary steps or if you've come to a conclusion from the history and the clinical examination you can always tell the patient that this is the diagnosis that you consider and you will be uh, taking certain steps now to confirm the diagnosis and further to treat the patient so it's very important that in the closing session that you conclude from the history what you have got the clinical scenario that you are considering and the next steps that you are taking 
So uh, in this um, session, I have basically given you an overview. So I have not covered all the diseases and everything, but I've made sure that you touch on different cornerstones uh, so that you come to a good conclusion. And you might have understood that it's very necessary. You have an in-depth knowledge about all the clinical condition um, so that you can ask a very good history. Only if you know deeply about the different uh, clinical conditions that you can ask the relevant questions uh, and get a proper negative history and come to a conclusion. And the further steps should be um, focused on examining the patient properly, which includes both the systemic examination as well as the dermatological examination and further investigating the uh, disease according to your uh, clinical diagnosis. So hope this video helps and let me know if you have any doubts. Thank you.